Hey there, Coastal Bend. Chris Thomason joined by Islanders men's basketball coach Jim Shaw. And first, coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for having me again. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. All right. Well, Islanders coming off a couple of road wins, a big one against Lamar, 75-61. Pretty dominant performance there and also an impressive offensive performance and a 91-79 win over Houston Christian. So, Coach, first question for me is, out of those two games, you know, what impressed you the most? The defensive intensity in the first half versus Lamar. I think the guys were really locked in. They understood what was at stake in that game, and uh, they were connected. They were talking. They were definitely uh, they, they were locked in to get getting stops on uh, on as many possessions as possible. Lamar is a really really good team. Offensively, they're the as far as points per game, they were the best team in the in the in the, in the Southland Conference. So that was impressive there. Offensively versus Houston Christian, I thought the guys shared the ball, got the ball. Uh, you know, close in, close in, and we had I don't know quite a few points in the paint versus Houston Christian. So just following the game plan versus them um, was was proud of the guys in that regards. Absolutely. So you guys have an, an unusual schedule this week. You've got three games in five days leading into the Southland tournament. Now, albeit these are all home games at least, but. Does that present any kind of different challenge in the practice workload that you put the guys through? For sure. You've got to be cognizant of the fact uh, that we will have three games in five days, which is very unusual at this level and especially at the end of the season. Uh, maybe you'll, you'll come across that early in the season when the legs are a little bit fresher but or more fresh. But So we're definitely going to have to, to dial it back a little bit in regards to practice time, the amount we're on the floor and the guys are on their feet over the next three days before we have homecoming on Saturday versus Southeastern Louisiana. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just like you mentioned, the, having the, the one day between each game, which that's not necessarily new. You do the Saturday-Monday schedule. But now having that back-to-back, -back, you know, that's that's got to be pretty tough, like you mentioned, on the guys this late in the year. For sure. For sure. But that's the schedule that that, that, that we have. Um, you did mention that we all, have, we all three games are at home. There's some – teams in the Southland Conference that are playing two on the road and then going home or or some even like Nichols State they have all three on the road so you got to look at the silver lining a little bit and look at the positive that all three games are at home in the American Bank Center in front of our fans and especially one of them being homecoming um, where um, the the alumni of this great university will be back and, and, and cheering us on. Now, I'm glad you mentioned Nichols because that kind of led into my next question. So, technically, you guys do not control your own destiny as far as the tiebreaker goes. If you guys and Nichols both went out, they would get the tiebreaker. However, they've got a pretty tough game Saturday against McNeese. So, do you guys do – I probably know the answer to this question, but do you guys do any scoreboard watching or is that just a matter of, you know, after you take care of your own business, then you go and look and see what other teams have done? Yeah, we, we, we uh, you know, we just play the game that's in front of us that day. And then, you know, afterwards, you'll, I'm sure the guys are on their phone at the looking on, on the uh, on the apps that, that give scores. Um, and, and seeing, you know, they're locked into what's going on with the rest of the rest of the team. So we'll play the game and then we'll see what's happening. It's not uh, it's not like this past season game 162 where the AL West, you know, had all different scenarios uh, at the end. And, the, and, and, and uh, the Astros were able to pull out the AL West championship. But so they're scoreboard watching to a certain extent, but it's not actually, you know, during the game like you would see in maybe a major league game. Yeah, absolutely. So I know we were talking about this the other day, but uh, are you finally up to up to speed on all the you know the uh, tiebreaker scenarios? Yeah, uh, with your help, with your help, um, you know, I, um, we'll see. And we're I, even though it's only a week away from being at the end of the regular season, we're still three games. That's a, that's a lot of games. Usually, that takes you know a whole seven to ten days to to play those three games. But uh, so there, there could be a, a number of different scenarios, but we're looking forward to playing um, Southeastern Louisiana on homecoming. All right, coach. Well, good luck to you guys over the next week. Hopefully by the next time I'm talking to you, I think we're going to do it after the next three games. So hopefully you've earned that double buy into the semis by the time I'm talking to you next time. 
that's that's the plan. I think the guys are the guys are, are hopefully locked in and and ready to compete um, against some really good teams at home. Yep. All right. So let's go through it real quick. The final three games of the regular season for the Islanders. Homecoming for the men and women Saturday against Southeastern Louisiana. Monday at home against New Orleans. And then Wednesday at home against Incarnate Word. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate you. All right, Coastal Ben. We will see you next week leading into the Southland Conference Tournament. Have a good one.